everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I am doing a distance energy healing and psychic wisdom session for a client. I want to thank the client so much for the opportunity to connect with you today. And thank you very much for sharing with us here on YouTube. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, I'm going to read your goals out loud and then we're going to get started. So you say, I want to face my inner demons and develop a stronger sense of myself. Can you please work with Archangel Azrael to help me bring light and rebirth to my soul? Thank you. This is such a cool request. It's hard work to face your inner demons. You're going to call upon Archangel Azrael to support you in this process to bring light and rebirth to your soul. Okay. Oh man. I don't know how to explain the feeling overcoming me here. But I'm going to close my eyes and we're going to get started, okay? Thank you again so much for this opportunity. I'm really curious to see what we discover today. Okay. Archangel Azrael. All right, this is quite peculiar. I'm being led to a, a space where there's a very thin wall of darkness, basically. It's like a liquid. And the air is quite dense here. I feel like there's something on the other side of this wall. Oh man, I'm starting to feel quite emotional. I'm coughing and it's hard to breathe. I'm just going to stand here for a moment. And I'm going to see that Archangel Azrael is with me, with you. And I see that you're watching, but I see it's almost like you're going to activate a door, but I wonder if it is a door that makes you feel more comfortable than potentially another door. That would be one of the hardest doors you could possibly open. I feel like it is a beginning, but I'm going to take a moment here with Archangel Azrael and then we're going to see how to proceed, okay? Angel Azrael takes me to a place. This has nothing to do with the door that I saw opening in that wall of the black liquid. It's almost like we're going down an elevator um, slightly over to the right. Um, I see you in a basically a hospital room and you're lying down and I see Operation the game, okay? And you represent the man on the table. You represent the operation. Um, it's almost like we can get the, I don't know, like the bucket or the butterfly out, right? Um, the little loaf of bread, right? But if we hit the sides, your nose starts to light up and there's a really loud sound. And, but this is no laughing matter and this is no game. And I see that you're unable to move and this scares you. I see multiple people at work here and they're working with instruments and your body is completely opened up to the air, opened up to the outside and this also scares you. You don't like the thought of your body being opened up to the air. I mean, I literally see a man and his chest is open and I see his heart and his organs and everything like I see it with my eyes what we shouldn't be seeing with our eyes. You shouldn't have that open. And I see that with my eyes and that is very uncomfortable for you. And you feel vulnerable because anything can happen. Anything can be done. And for instance, I could literally reach my hand and take one of your organs and just throw them against a wall or something. Like I could do vile things, but that's not happening. These are respectable doctors and they are respecting your body and they're doing their work. 
I see you outside your body looking now at yourself. And you don't like what you see. And you can't change that. You don't know how to look me in the eye. I tell you it's okay to look me in the eye. It's okay to look at Archangel Azrael. I know that what we're looking at here is a vulnerability. And let's continue to make sense of it, shall we? It's an odd sense of uh, struggle with trusting people. I mean, this part of yourself is really rigid and very uh, not flexible when it comes to trusting anybody. <laughs> so that's pretty impressive that you're reaching out to work on this because for you to open up your heart, which is exposed here in the operation, to trusting even the doctors in the scene, to trusting me and Archangel Azrael, um, to trusting is really hard for you. And it actually spirals you down a drain, really. Because you'll give in to trust because you have no choice, but then once this operation is complete, it's almost like it spirals you downward, and you want to just give in to not trusting even louder and even more relentlessly for a time. Instead of just taking a nice deep breath, inhale, exhale, that this was an opportunity that you could realize you could give in to trust. You don't like lessons that have to do with trust. It's really hard for you. Archangel Azrael is just showing us this, that's all. And I don't see that you look Archangel Azrael in the eye, and neither does Archangel Azrael look you in the eye. And there's something odd about his appearance. He looks like Darth Vader. Seriously. He looks like Darth Vader. And I'm starting to see a plate and it's full of peas. And a fork that is trying to almost like spear the peas that are rolling around and then eat a couple peas at a time almost like a kid playing with your food and in the mind of this child is the question what do i have and what do i not have And you feel stuck, unable to move now. And you don't want to look anybody in the eyes. But you pay attention with your ears. So you're looking with your ears. You're listening. But your eyes are on your plate and on the peas as though you aren't paying attention, but you hear every sound. And you try to ignore some of the things that you hear. Try to pretend like you didn't hear that. But yet you can't help the curiosity. You can't help but want to listen, even if you don't necessarily like what you hear. And I see you're a little more um, focused now on stabbing peace, okay? And you're getting better and better at doing this. And you're still listening and something is developing in you and it's anger. And you're becoming angry. And in a weird way, you want to take this plate and you want to smash it in two pieces and you want to throw it and you want to cut the throats of people. It's almost like people are evil people. People are evil and you want to rid the world of evil people. And you're very angry and you can't make evil people go away. And I see that you're back um, stabbing the peas that the plate never broke and he never sliced anybody's throat, but that passion's coming out and it's angry. It's, it's wanting to rid the world of evil people coming from the mind of a child. Like you could be a superhero, for instance. 
But you can't do anything, actually. I wonder how long you've been stabbing these peas for. And I see another scene. You're also a child and you're in the bathtub. And there's something safe about the bathroom where you could close the door and lock everybody out and it could be your time. And you're in the bathtub. And you think about the things that you've heard. You don't necessarily think about it more than you feel present with the feelings. I see another scene and you're also the same boy and I see two things happening at once. You're being measured, um, you're growing taller, okay? You're being measured by a mother and then the same mother is cutting your tongue out of your mouth. And you just focus on the fact that you are growing taller, that you are being measured but your tongue is being removed. You don't focus on the tongue being removed. You focus on being measured. And you try very hard to focus on being measured over anything else. Because there's something joyful and special about how tall you are right now and how tall you're getting and how tall you've grown over the years. There's something special about that. But this removal of the tongue is not a special experience. It does not make you feel good at all. Ask Archangel Azrael, what, what do we do next here? What do, can we do to help you? Archangel Azrael asked me to continue to watch the scenes. <sighs> okay. But this time to see that you truly did lose your tongue that there is no tongue there. And it's a weird, cruel reality when a tongue is removed by your own mother. And you're deformed. You're just a kid with no tongue. And I see a strange man appear who's quite aggressive and then he takes a knife and just stabs you immediately in the heart. And in a way you give in to that because there's something about your innocence that it's, not, it's like you weren't allowed to be innocent in your life. You were forced to be in a way ag aggressive or a protector or, and that violated your upbringing, that violated your innocence. And you're never given time to cry about that. Seems to me that there's something missing here in your ability to translate your place with people, your relationship with the world, your relationship with yourself. I don't know how to explain that other than we, you needed some kind of grounded foundation that you weren't standing on. Then you were working through one scene at a time, um, was sort of going through the scenes, but there wasn't, a, the, the roots weren't planted. They weren't, you weren't planted into a grounded place. So you weren't rooted through each and every experience. Even when you tried in this bathtub, I see you're reflecting on the things that you heard, but you had no grounding. You had no way of in interpreting it with, with a, from a place of growth other than reaction, okay? Your heart is under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. 
You are fighting back the tears. You are reconciling your childhood or your innocence. You're conflicted still about good and evil, you could say, about the superhero and maybe the, the basic man. Because the question is, were you able to rid the world of evil people? I mean, I, I would really like to know how you want to answer that inside yourself because that's something your childhood self said that you needed to be that, okay? And that would in a way, be a cure-all for you. But it wasn't real. It was just a response or a reaction to the environment. It wasn't actually something that you legit, it genuinely meant. It's like uh, saying um, to a parent, I hate you and running away. It's just a formulation of trying to work through something, but it's not really getting, um, it's, it's not really getting us where we need to be. There has to be more, more depth. There has to be s some more depth here. All right, so Azrael, what, what do you recommend that we do next? Do we go to the black watery wall or do we take the first door? Is there somewhere deeper or something inside of me is saying that we're still at the surface. We're still at the surface and the only way to truly reconcile this is to go into unknown territory for you, like the realms of the unknown. And I, I feel like you would batten down the hatches and lock the doors tight and never go there, even if you wanted to. I feel like it's getting to where your fears are because you really need to open all of that up because it's gonna breathe meaning into your being. It's almost like years of time lost in a way running away from the depth because it was easier to live in the simplicity of a reaction, of a statement, of an idea than to open up all those dimensions, open up all those doors and enter into the shaky unknown. I feel something about a, a representation of a mother that um, almost like shielded you from ever going, ever opening all those doors. It's almost like shielded you in a simple box. In a way, she feels like a simple box to me. And for her to understand love, she would need to be loved too by a simple box. And that if you could be a simple box, then she could finally feel loved. Something like this. I see you as a simple box. I see her become a simple box. I see a hugs between the simple boxes. The thing is, you're not a simple box and neither was she. Maybe she needed simplicity, but that was for her. What's interesting, it feels like you received complexity, but you were asked to be simple-minded about it. And that was you saying, yes, I will be a simple box. But it wasn't really you, and you don't owe anybody anything here. You, This is more going to get more complicated, as Azrael is telling me that... <sighs> Because we're going to ask you if you're ready to break. It's actually not a wall, but a floor. And it's not a ceiling. It's not a wall. It's a floor. Okay, the floor that you stand on. And if you're ready to break that floor down or not. And I mean, he's at really seriously asking because 
if you say yes, you're ready, it's going to, it's almost like, um, let's say there's, um, mul multiple decades of time here. And, um, Okay, here's an idea. I, I learned this like way back at like junior high um, health class about alcoholism. And I, I've learned it elsewhere in psychology classes about people who develop alcoholism, let's say at age 16, and they um, drink for um, well, now they're 56, let's say, and they've decided that they're going to quit drinking they will revert back to the mentality of the 16 year old and it's going to it's almost like they developed um, their mentality and they developed their themselves through alcohol and they never got to know themselves without alcohol and so they're missing all of that time and so something about this boy and then you today when we break this floor, it's like you're going to catch up with all that missing time. And it's not a simple task. It is a unbelievable one, okay? It is like, it could be a, a, a life, um, like like a an OMG uh, event, okay? And it's like, it can vibrate through the rest of your life. And you got to be ready for this, okay? So we're going to ask if you're ready for this or we could start in smaller steps. And let's see what you're ready for. I mean, you're obviously ready for this, but let's let's see how ready or how deep you want to go, okay? And it's okay, whatever the response is, we're going to listen to your deeper self right now. Okay, this is concerning. All right, there's, um, you are responding, but not with a language. You're responding with an action. And um, a black liquid flood is um, pushing through this uh, like wall of black liquid. And then a black liquid flood is pushing through it. And there's all these rolling heads. There's just like lots of rolling heads coming um, towards me and Archangel Azrael. And I see a real flipping monster up here. And we're talking like, like a, a version of the devil, so to speak. Like a, a um, basically a, a, he has red skin. He looks like Hellboy. I mean, he straight up looks like Hellboy, but he's huge. He's like freaking twenty foot tall Hellboy, and he's got a big belly and he burps as he drinks alcohol, and he's like a Hellboy, and he's foul. I mean, he's. Um, showing off his man parts here and because he's so huge and we're looking up like we can obviously see so and he's like swinging things around and like yeah you are watching you are looking at me yeah you see me huh don't you like okay <laughs> mm. and any he steps he has really like heavy steps like Every step he takes is like shaking um, the world around us. And he's really um, pornographic, okay? He's really um, in, trying to infiltrate us with his manhood. Like he's pushing it into our souls, literally. And we're just standing here learning about his behavior, okay? So he can do whatever he wants. It's just teaching us about him. That's all. And we're pretty neutral. So it's not, I mean, offensive. We're just learning. So it actually helps when he's being himself. Okay. It helps so that we can understand what you, you have going on inside. This will help us. Okay. I, I feel sad right now. I feel like crying. Something is changing in the, in the emotions here. Like, like there's a little boy that's looking at this but you aren't really you just you just kind of hide now like you you disappear like you never were there and i don't feel emotional anymore so i'm supposed to bring the the childhood um the boy and the tongue removed all that i'm bringing it inside myself and so that i'm i am holding you within myself, okay? So you're safe, and then I'm shielding you from anything that makes you 
like too weak or too vulnerable or too innocent or too little for this, you know. And Archangel Azrael says, no, I will take you. And so I move the boy from me and in, into Archangel Azrael. And then Azrael actually bows and says, thank you to me for doing that. Because you need to feel protected. It's almost like you weren't protected and you decided to be a protector, but you knew you couldn't be. You just uh, told yourself that you were going to be like a superman or a superhero of some kind and that you could be um, a protector of people, but I mean, you could make all the evil people go away, but actually um, you knew better. You knew you were lying to yourself, that you couldn't do anything, that you were helpless and harmless and useless to your vision because you were little, because you, genuinely you couldn't do anything. Even if you wanted to, you couldn't. And that's the reality. And that reality is hard to swallow. That reality is unfair. Because the innocent child did not have to face this, but did. And Azrael then is protecting you. And I see this big hell boy is changing. Like, um, he's starting to feel a little more naked. He's kind of wondering what he's why he was doing that, like, maybe he, he's kind of like looking at his body and saying, was I doing what I think I was doing? Like, I don't remember choosing or to, or to do that. I feel like um, I must have been drunk or I was blacked out or I was, I don't remember doing that. And he feels a little sheepish, like he feels smaller. And, but he doesn't um, hide his nakedness. He doesn't hide his nudity. He's like, well, you've already seen it, so what's the point? I, I ask, what is the relationship here with your manhood? <laughs> like, what does it mean to you? It starts to represent you, actually. It has to do with um, your purpose, really. You as a man must have manhood and that's your purpose and say so actually is i mean it's the birds and the bees isn't it like i could see that's true yeah is that all that you are though is that it that's it yeah this is this is good because this is we're we're starting to unravel something here because you you're you're leaning back on an old behavior all right the old behavior is um you're trying to be a simple box about things and that's what's getting in your way because you were guided or you were encouraged to be by by your mother which is like mother god that's kind of what's emanating by a fem female emanation um that represents the mother okay um, very influential um and so you adopt it on a level and that then isn't really the depths of who you are. It's a very simple box mentality. You know what I mean? So I need you to break the simple box mentality. I need you to give in to the ocean of who you are. Now that the black gross heads are a rolling hellboy flailing simple box reality. Now my purpose is my manhood. That's, that's my purpose. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually perfect. <laughs> what if that was all our purposes? Like, you know, my womanhood, my manhood, that's my purpose. Okay, like, you know, that makes like life so much easier, doesn't it? <laughs> There's literally nothing else to do. <laughs> but beer, our womanhoods, or our manhood, done. <laughs> okay. All right, this is another thing. Okay, somewhere along the line, you are more clever than this. Come on now. You're, you ha I see a reflection of you that basically has a lobotomy. I mean, you, and the information isn't moving through certain parts of your brain fully, completely. Like you, you created a dam or a wall to make sure that you, you didn't represent being complicated. I mean, you kept it simple box, okay?
No, I'm not putting, I'm not okay. It's like I am drawing the line here and I'm saying no. Because you're also using that as an excuse. Well, I didn't know. Oh, I must have forgot. Oh, whoops, I must have been drunk or whatever. You're using it as an excuse because you know what you're doing. You, are, you know what you're doing. Okay, that's, su that's super, super important that um, you acknowledge, okay? You acknowledge that you are awake and aware of every single action, okay? That you are awake and aware of who you are and what you're doing and your choices and you're owning up to your choices. And you're not playing dumb because there's a, there's a very loud and numb sensation kind of wrapped around your mental body um, that, that says like... It's like ditzy, like, oh, I well, you know, I don't know, or just kind of erasing that I heard that or erasing that that ever happened or erasing, I don't know what you mean by that, erasing it, okay? And then it takes you off the hook constantly and you don't have to feel anything about it you, because nothing is really happening here. Of course, whoops, I guess I, I forgot or whoops, I didn't mean to swing my manhood around. I don't remember that. And now it's like, blip, didn't even ever happen. Completely erased from your memory. Don't know what you're talking about. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. You are consciously aware of, of what you see, of what you say, of what you participate in, of what you do, of what you have done and will do in your life. You are taking ownership of this. You are the owner of every choice and action that you have ever had in your whole life. This is really good that Archangel Azrael took that child because I see that child is looking like a demonic being. And I see Archangel Azrael is... Um, shifting in um, the presentation as well. And I'm starting to hear the sound of um, deflecting and avoidance. And I hear the bell toll and we're amplifying the sound because you're picking up on this. It is the divine time. Better to face this head on than to avoid and deflect because you, you won't be able to forever, okay? And you know this anyway. And I'll be honest, there is something peculiar about this representation of the child, representation of the mother, um, representation of... Um, adopting ideas and identities and keeping the simple box nature and there's a, a meanings behind all of this and it's like going the the tide is rolling and it does catch up with itself like it's going to catch up with you too good better to hit this head on right like a ram just hit it head on you don't scuttle, don't scurry, don't put your head in the sand, don't play games with your mind. And there you're playing them with yourself. You're not going to benefit from this. It's like putting yourself in an Alzheimer's ward or something and you don't even have Alzheimer's. Don't play this mind game with yourself. It's a really bad one. These are just simply things I'm being presented with, things to think about, okay? That's all, just things to really think about. And, and the, the main one that keeps hitting me is, is take ownership of every choice you've ever made. Take ownership, okay? And then be proud of yourself. And if it doesn't make you feel proud to take ownership of that, then make sure the decisions that you're making make you feel proud of yourself. That way you have no problem taking ownership. And something has to be rehabilitated here because there's something you you decided something subconsciously or maybe consciously, but you created kind of a dam in your brain that is not allowing um, inf information to. It's almost like um, expand in in a way like to break the simple box concepts, like to be fully a multi-dimensional self. All right, we're going to go into what is the room with... I had this in my mind full of doors that are like shut, okay? And we're going to ask if you're ready for the ground to break. Yep. 
you don't und you, you kind of uh, say I don't understand what you mean and you show me that um, life is forever like I mean it's like going to see a um, sports like a football game or a basketball game and life is forever just cheering on a winning or a losing team life is um, like a bar stool just spinning around it and saying hello to the next person And I don't believe that that is actually what you are saying in your heart. I believe that's convenient. That's what the simple box would say. And I believe that's convenient to say that, but I don't believe that you are actually saying that from the depths of your heart, no. And I'm going to create the amplification of what your heart is saying so that you can start to hear it. And no wonder the scene with the operation because it's a vulnerable thing when your heart is exposed. A very vulnerable thing and maybe that's what these childhood memories are about is your heart was exposed to things that you heard and it didn't make you feel good about the world that you lived in. And something of your tongue being removed, it represents, it's symbolic of something and focusing on the simple growth and, and the lines on the wall showing you how you're growing, but you have to grow in every way, not just taller. You show me that some bugs live in jars and you you have no capacity to unscrew the lid and then you find it safer in the jar because everything outside that jar is a threat to your safety and security and you don't really know how to live with the lid off as in your response to the ground shaking or the ground breaking It's kind of like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's like um, you are speaking from a place of, of your vulnerability and being very honest about it. And it's, it's extremely well said and well understood. I feel like it's a great, um, it's a great step forward, to be honest. Big steps can even be as conceived of as simple small steps but really I think this is quite a large step I, I recommend that you imagine just play pretend in your mind you don't have to make a choice but you can play pretend in your mind here in the scenario where let's say somebody does unscrew the lid and let's say you have freedom to leave the jar what would it look like outside the jar and and have fun with it like it would look like um I don't know um, swirling rainbows and happy faces like it doesn't have to look threatening might be good to introduce yourself to it, it is safe to b expand it is safe to expand beyond the jar you've been existing in for this long it is safe to expand Okay, I, I'm going to stay with us for just another minute because you, you're making such good progress. Like things are starting to flow here and you show me, um, you're imagining but that it, happy face and rainbows, but then suddenly you're looking at your face in a black mirror and you don't see your reflection looking back. You see something far worse than yourself and there's no way that that could be you and it looks like a, a horrifying demonic face. And you say, um, you can see why I need to stay in the jar. <laughs> I, might I might lose my mind if I leave it. I feel like my life um, could be threatened, as in my life or death even. This could be as threatening as the end of my life. 
to try to work on this. And I say, again, this is an, this is an excellent step. You're just simply expressing, you're inventing about what scares you. Venting about what, what could, could potentially be and being honest about it. So there's a demon in the mirror looking back at you. Who's the real threat here? Especially the one that wants to save the world from evil people. You're going to have to face the most evil, the face of them all, right? That you're the one that's going to save us from the evil. So it's time to, to live in your statement. It's time to catch up from childhood to adulthood. It's like time to take those years and time to catch up with yourself. That statement, you stated it from your heart. Then you washed it away and said, no, I can't do that. You created a wall and then you chose the simple box. But no, you are, you are going to rid the world of evil people. And it starts when you leave this jar and you face the scariest face of them all. That's the evil. And you're strong enough to do this. And that's the truth. That is the truth. So you venting is as actually yet another step forward. It's already progress. See, and, and we've got Archangel Azrael here on your team, on your side, helping you with this. You can do this. You can conquer this. You can conquer you. You can prove that an old dog can learn some new tricks, right? I give you a hug and I say I'm proud of you. You're not a simple box. All right. <sighs> Man, it's like you never know what you're going to get. Thank you so very much for this. Very interesting, very meaningful. <sighs> you're really learning about human nature here. Really learning about what we're struggling with in all different kinds of ways. Thank you for opening up and challenging yourself to do this. And I know you're already making strides. All right, thank you everybody for watching and I wish you all an amazing day.